Welcome to This is Recruiting. Thank you so much for joining us for our first ever webinar in 2023. If you are joining us for the first time, This is Recruiting is a webinar series that we at Hacker Earth have created to bring to you industry experts from across the world in different fields of HR, talent acquisition, tech recruiting, and even engineering managers to come and tell you a little bit about their stories, their experiences, and of course, tips that you can take back for your job as well. So if you're hearing about, if you haven't heard about us, Hacker Earth, we are basically matchmakers to developers and your hiring managers. So what we do is we have an entire suite of products that can help you across your tech hiring life cycle. We help you increase your hiring efficiency by up to 60%. And we do this with our entire suite. We have tools that are used for attracting and sourcing. That is our assessment tool. We have uh, tools for screening, as well as remote interviewing, something that's become super important in the recent past. And of course, we also have tools for continuous engagement and upskilling as well. So we have an assessment tool, we have a hackathons tool, and now we are slowly going to be moving into an LND tool as well, but more on that a little later. If you're interested to know more about Hacker Earth, you can join, you can just check out our link, hackerearth.com slash recruit. I will put that link up here in a little while. Uh, but, you know, before we get too much into that, let me introduce to you our first speaker of this year of This Is Recruiting. And he's been here before. So if you're a regular, you've probably seen him back when he was at TikTok, Jason Vori. And he's uh, right now, he's doing AI and ML and, global talent, and is a global talent acquisition lead at GSK. So if you paid attention a little while earlier while we were chatting, this is his dream job right now. And I just want to take a minute to congratulate him on that because I know how hard it was getting that. And I know how excited he was when he got it as well. So <laughs> kudos to you, Jason. Yes, Rebecca, you are um, always in my corner uh, from when I first alerted you about the layoff at TikTok um, to my uh, invite to interview for GSK as I went through the process and my panel interview. And um, yeah, you were just very supportive and I appreciate that. Yeah, so before we get into our main discussion today, and we're going to be talking about tech recruiting must-haves for the year 2023. But before we get into that, I'm going to hand it over to Jason to just give us a little bit of an introduction about himself. Jason, why don't you tell us about your journey so far and you know how it's been in the past year especially? Yeah, I mean, I've had quite a long journey Um in my career in general, but specifically in recruitment. Um, you know, I am from upstate New York, uh, Rochester. So growing up was all cornfields and uh, cemeteries and Friday night football. So, um, you know, after that, I moved out to Los Angeles. I just wanted to go somewhere where the energy and things were happening. Um, so I tried all different careers from project management to construction management um, to hospitality management. And uh, I went through about eight or nine career changes in the first, let's say, nine years of my, you know, uh, post high school. And then um, not till around the age of 30, I had moved to Munich, Germany. And in Munich, Germany in 2010, I went to college uh, at an Irish satellite campus for Griffith University or Griffith College. And that's when I started recruiting. Um, I needed to take on an internship. And so my first experience in recruitment was working for an agency. So as many of you know that are probably here, you may currently work for an agency. Um, you know, a lot of that revolves around a small base salary and a commission scheme on your placements, right? And it's a simple model, and a lot of us live and breathe that model. And um, you know, I started doing that for the first five years of my career. I started in Germany, and then I became the global account manager for 
company called Huawei. So Huawei was a network services company, and I did everything from RAN engineers to optimization engineers to uh, civil works engineers that dig ditches. And so I hired all contractor work. Um, and then as telecoms, and that's where IT comes in, right? And so around the late uh, 2017, 16, uh, 18, all of a sudden virtualization of networks and information came and cloud uh, platforms came. And so I had to learn about the IT side. And then I started working with Tech Mahindra. So Tech Mahindra is an IT services company that started providing services to Huawei for the IT needs. So that was great. And uh, I came over to the US or back to the US in 2015. Um, and I was doing HR mergers and acquisitions. And that's where I fell onto TikTok. Um, and two years or the last two years, I've been working at the infrastructure of TikTok. Um, if you could imagine, uh, um, you know, multi-billion dollar company functioning like a startup, right? Mm -hmm. There was uh, thousands of engineers that needed to be hired. Um, the goal was 21,000 engineers in two years. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah. So if you could imagine trying to be a part of um, a scalable 21,000 person hire, the uh, volume of interviews alone uh, were mind blowing. So I started there and, and I got to really hone in on tech skills, which I'll talk a little bit about later, you know, really understanding the software development life cycle and really, really digging down and understanding those terms. So as a tech recruiter, when you're speaking with these candidates, um, it makes you much more relatable. And the number one thing it develops is trust between yourself and the candidate, um, right. especially in these high level jobs and high level roles, um, that little bit of knowledge and tech knowledge goes a long ways, which I can elaborate a little bit more on in my current situation at GSK. But, um, you know, as she mentioned, uh, life has some strange uh, twists and turns. Uh, TikTok decided to um, downsize and let go of hundreds of recruiters and um, other business managers. And um, just like a lot of you maybe that are here today, uh, I found myself unemployed uh, at the end of last year. And uh, maybe we can go through a little bit about what I did and how I overcame that unemployment in today's market. Right. Um, but as she uh, wrapped up with, I have now landed my dream job. Um, I am now kind of the lead uh, talent acquisition or director of talent acquisition for AIML. So what's happened in the last five, six years uh, healthcare is kind of late to the tech party, if you will. So healthcare on, is now starting to implement automation and machine learning and AI into all of their systems. And here at GSK, I actually run about 14 project teams around the world all working on cures for cancer and AIDS and respiratory disease. So, you know, in a small aspect, I play a role in coming up with the cure for cancer through AI. And, um, you know, that, uh, that journey, both of the global exposure that I had, right? GSK has 100,000 employees globally. So we're in a, a global organization. And then that knowledge I took with me into TikTok and learned from TikTok technically wise on software and business layerings and how businesses work when it comes to IT, um, I could transfer that knowledge. And I would have never thought to pivot to healthcare, right? I was looking to go to Google or Apple or Amazon. Um, you know, those were my goals in life was to get in at Google as an internal recruiter. Um, so uh, when I took that change into healthcare, I said, you know, why are they hiring me? You know, um, if you would look at, there was 300 recruiters got interviewed for my job, you know, wow. and, uh, <laughs> and, 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 and <laughs> yeah. And, 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 um, 
you know, none of them had the tech knowledge from the medical industry, if you will. Um, you know, they all came from AstraZeneca and Johnson and Johnson and Pfizer, but none of them really had that Google, uh, Meta, TikTok infrastructure knowledge that they need right. to build teams. So here we are. That's great. And it's it's so nice to hear about your story. I mean, I've heard it so many times, but it's, it's always, you know, just so interesting because you've done so much. <laughs> Uh, but that being said, let's get into, you know, the questions that we have today, some of them that have come from our different from our recruiter community itself. And the first one is, you know, very much related to whatever we've just been discussing, because from the second half of 2022, with layoffs and hiring freezes, we noticed that upskilling was definitely a common theme among a lot of organizations. And given that you are a technical recruiter, what do you think recruiters themselves need to learn this year that can make them more employable in the current market? You know, especially given that you told us yourself just now, right, how you got into GSK because of that core infrastructure knowledge. That's right. That's right. And, um, you know, it, uh, you know, like I mentioned prior, it was interesting that I was laid off. And, you know, the question you proposed was, you know, what do you do as far as upskilling and making yourself more marketable on that market? Um, you know, one or the best piece of advice I could definitely give a tech recruiter is to grab a book, grab a friend, take a class on tech itself right um i i currently am working with a a, a um a, a, a recruitment partner to where a lot of the recruiters are assigned to me and none of them have any tech knowledge right they come oh. from they come from a massive rpo or agency and the agency just says okay here's seven recruiters for you jason and then come to find out none of them know about machine learning and algorithms and applications and development and programming, right? So my first piece of advice would be for anybody to continue your knowledge quest for tech, right? Um, the reason why I love my job, so I'm a tech nerd, right? I, I love trying to see how robotics and AI come together and now to implement uh uh, an AI system to predictive model a cure for a disease um, to understand how that process works, it's it's invaluable, right? And it makes you more valuable for your own personal pay, right? Um, right. When I first started in recruitment, I was just working at an agency for like 20K base and, you know, a uh, um, uh, 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 you know, commission scheme. And, and I didn't know that I needed this knowledge. I just thought, okay, I find people and I put them in a seat and uh, it was great. But then slowly over the years, I gained knowledge of tech and knowledge of telecoms and knowledge of systems and knowledge of what businesses need. And then all of a sudden I'm talking with these hiring managers and they're saying, okay, Jason knows, right? He's a tech recruiter. He's not only a good recruiter, but Jason actually knows how software works. So that would be my first piece of advice when it comes to upskilling your tech knowledge, just in general for the conversations, right? We're not coders, right? We don't know how to log into uh, GitHub and, and, and code out a bunch of lines. We just don't know. So, but we do know what a code is and we do know how it applies to our job. It's so important. Um, and I think it makes you more, uh, it would make, give you more confidence. Your hiring managers would get more confidence in your abilities, right? I think that's always a thing as well, right? A lot of people are complaining that recruiters are just finding us people and, you know, we don't know whether they're really qualified. We have to take the extra time to get to know them and figure things out. But I'm sure with someone like you who has such in-depth knowledge about the product itself, about the role that you're hiring for when it comes to tech. So that preliminary vetting is, you know, done at least. Yes, we're running into that problem now, right? Due to the amount of resumes needed to be reviewed by the hiring right. manager. So the hiring manager is getting 50 resumes where only 10 are applicable. Whereas if that recruiter upskilled themselves, 
worked better with the hiring manager. Now he's only got to review 10 resumes or 15 resumes as opposed to 50. And so this is exactly the issue we're running into here on my desk this week. I am going to be giving a tech tutorial to all of my recruiters in this knowledge space. Right. So that's, and- a, that's another thing is, is, is asking for uh, uh, resources and help in your current business, right? A lot of uh, the current companies that we work in and there may be opportunities in other departments or divisions, right? And, and, and that knowledge can turn you on to a better job. Definitely, definitely. And, and then I also wanted to mention uh, as far as upskilling and the layoffs go is to pivoting industries. So my career trajectory was always geared towards tech, tech, and bigger tech. And, and, and then all of a sudden, like I mentioned, healthcare coming on board. I never would have thought that I could take my AI ML tech knowledge and transfer it to a biopharma company that creates vaccines and drugs, right? right. And, and, but, but you don't know what you don't know. So, so I'm there thinking I've got no chance against the director of recruitment from AstraZeneca. I just got no chance. But lo and behold, he didn't know anything about subsystems and how algorithms work. And so it put me at that spot. So really understand what industries, uh, fintech, right? Financial tech is coming up. Biotech is coming up. Uh, Every single industry is now tagging a tech until the end of it. And, and so don't pigeonhole yourself in what you've been doing, right? And don't pigeonhole yourself in agency work, right? I went from an agency to an RPO to in-house. So I worked all three recruitment models, right? First was, oh, agency's great. It's contractors and I build a portfolio and you get residuals. And then, oh, an RPO, I'm embedded. I got a TikTok email address and a TikTok phone number, Oh, but then they fired all the RPOs. Oh, man. You know, and and so now going internal with these larger companies, they take care of you better. Uh, More security, right? Healthcare is not going anywhere. Exactly, exactly. Yep. And on that same note, you know, about companies becoming more tech focused. Just the other day, I think. So we had someone on here who was the hiring manager at uh, the New York Times. And when we had him on for our webinar, people were like, wait, the New York Times knows about tech. And he was like, yes, of course we do, because we have an application. It's not <laughs> newspapers anymore. It's about, and then he, he went on about Wordle and then everyone understood. <laughs> like, okay. Wow. That's what the tech is. Yeah, like the newspaper industry, you know, who, who would have thought that now tech is infiltrating you know, the hiring. Exactly. But yeah. So I'm going to move on to our next question, yeah. you know, keeping with the theme of upskilling. How important is it right now for recruiters to drive upskilling initiatives within their companies? And what are ways that you would suggest to go about it? Yeah. So again, you know, what I was just talking about giving trainings to, to these, um, you know, involved agency. recruiters here at agency recruiters is, you know, we at GSK utilize an agency or an RPO and um, the upscaling of these recruiters is going to help my business immensely, right? So me as the overall lead for the division globally, you know, I am successful by leading people. And so my leading people includes upskilling my recruiters. So, and, um, so for example, I had a discussion yesterday, do I implement more budget to hire another third party agency or do I just upscale my current recruiters and save that money? Right. So now I look good to the business. 
I'm saving you money. And all I'm doing is just sharing my knowledge to those recruiters, right? And there's so much you can share from uh, LinkedIn projects setting up to, uh, um, you know, email drip campaigns to different networking techniques to putting yourself in front of these discussion groups. Um, you know, it, you wouldn't think about it, but AIML is going to Twitter, right? So I have to set up a Twitter page, you know, like there's so many uh, avenues and processes that the recruiters can just upskill themselves with awareness that they can make themselves um, more valuable to who they're working with. Right. And besides training programs, you know, what, what else has been done so far in GSK or even at TikTok, you know, what are the other ways that you've upskilled people in the past? Yes. Um, we, we actually, over at TikTok, we would have um, uh, weekly and annual uh tech updates and trainings, right? So every week as a company, we could all log in and share what we've heard in the market, in the streets. Um, I don't know if you guys heard about this new Hacker Jobs uh, platform, right? So Hacker Jobs is a new platform that you can sign up for as a recruiter. And then as the recruiter, you can go in there and post your jobs that you have yourself and then all of a sudden you've got access to the whole GitHub community and the GitHub oh. community is, yeah. So this new hacker jobs job board is because, you know, so I didn't know about that until I went to this, you know, upskilling, sharing type environment that the company held. And so that's another large part you can implement at your own businesses. Um, you know, right. hey guys, let, let's have a bi-weekly, a monthly catch up on skills and tools right yeah no that that's that sounds great actually i mean knowledge sharing is also a big part especially with tech right i mean you'd have to constantly have maybe your product managers or hiring managers explaining parts of the product to tech recruiters to understand you know where they're coming from and what they should be looking at next i think that's also something a lot of people can start implementing now Yes, yes. I mean, there's two levels to it, right? There's the strategic upper level management about, okay, what are we using and how? And then there's the recruiter, hey, I can utilize this method and this tool and this platform effectively and share that knowledge with the business. And that way you're making yourself more of a valuable employee to them and you know, indispensable. Yeah, definitely. Uh, okay, I'm going to move on to our next question. And I think this might sound a little bit re repetitive because, I mean, because I want to talk again about your journey as a recruiter, just because it's so fascinating to me. And when you sure. came on our webinar last year, you told us about the many initiatives you led, you know, across different geographies. You just gave us a little bit of a glimpse of it just now. But in the past year, with the great resignation, the reshuffle, the reset, and everything that happened beyond that, what are some of the biggest takeaways that you had, not just with the later half of you know 2022, but what are some takeaways that you had and things that we can you can share with our uh, TA community right now? Yeah, I, I mean, obviously with the reshuffle that, put in an incredible amount of talent out into the market, right? And, and so over at TikTok, we had created a layoff and downsizing sheet. And so every day, the recruiters would add to the sheet who was laying off and who was downsizing. And, and so that actually, the, that gave not only the you know, individuals that lost their jobs, a good chance to be reached out to from those companies. It, it, it also put, you know, um, you know, a platform together for, for that to happen. And um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the diversity piece also, right? So um, with everything that's happened and the change, every big corporation, you, you step into any large corporation the first thing as a recruiter you're going to hear is diversity right you're, how are we doing it right how do we overcome it what's our plan 
because um, in America you have cer certain goals and aspirations, right? You, it's actually a legal aspect where you need to show your efforts. Um, so mm -hmm. a, a, a bit of advice for everybody would be to, you know, understand diversity and, 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 and look at that pool of available candidates that have come onto the market and, and create a strategy from picking from that pool and to, you know, enrich your diverse culture at your company. Because there's nothing more important to a company than being diverse. Um, you know, uh, just like tick, you know, just like GSK hired me from big tech into pharma, you know, I've come in and been able to reshuffle and restructure old processes that they just were just old. Right. And, you know, here we have 100,000 employees and they're, you know, using an archaic search and find method. And all they're doing is just posting on the website and that's it. And, and so, um, you know, the uh, the ability to, you know, understand diversity and bring in different concepts, even when you're interviewing. Right. You're interviewing for a job. Discuss diversity. You know, you may not be the perfect candidate for that job. But you got the interview and you start discussing with the hiring manager, you know, hey, I come from a diverse company. I'm a little bit different than what you're looking for. But hey, Mr. Hiring Manager, look at what I can bring to the table. So and in, in uh, tech hiring, how, how have you approached, you know, diversity or well, what are some of the sourcing techniques that you have to tap into that pool of like diverse candidates? Yeah, I mean, I'm lucky here at GSK, right? We have an entire department um, oh, dedicated yeah. to just that. <laughs> it's called diversity recruitment. And um, so what's happening is as a talent acquisition lead, I engage diversity recruitment for my needs, right? So as mentioned, I have 14 project teams around the world, and each one of those teams has a different diversity need. And, and so what I can do is partner with diversity recruitment, what they do is go out and um, join these different groups and seminars. I don't know if you've, anyone's heard of the Grace Hopper seminar. So if you guys want to Google Grace Hopper, um, every year there's a conference in her name and all the big tech uh, people are there on consideration of diversity, right? So there's all these conferences going on that people have sponsored and initiated related to diversity in tech. And so I would have never known that if I didn't start researching where to find these pools of diverse candidates. And you can join a lot of these groups on LinkedIn. There's a lot of diversity women in the workforce, um, you, you know, African men in business. And there's just a lot of different specific groups linked to diversity that you both can get as a free resource on LinkedIn and outside of the LinkedIn on local community pages. And then also you can pay for some of those services. But, you know, that diversity piece, even on a small scale, if you work for a small company, just to initiate a diversity program, um, you can make yourself really look good by doing so. Right, right. I, I had no idea that this was like a common thing with uh, tech oh. companies and attending like conferences, especially for diversity. Wow, that's, <laughs> that's super interesting. Did not yes. know about that before. Yeah, if you definitely, like I mentioned, a lot of the larger, you know, 10,000 plus employees, um, it's monitored by the government in the U.S., so you can actually have a legal, um, you know, goal tied to your rec. So you, it's a, it's a big thing. Okay. Okay. And uh, I mean, yeah, we, we discussed a lot about layoffs, but I, I think we didn't really touch about, you know, hiring freezes and what do recruiters, you know, do when there's a hiring freeze, especially given that, you know, most of your time is engaged in creating a pipeline or constantly interviewing people, interviewing resumes, seeing things there. And how do you engage recruiters at that time, especially, you know, being a team lead? And when you're looking over what 14 geographies you said, what, what do you do then? 
Yeah, I mean, we definitely go through, or I have been through hiring freeze periods, right? Um, on, a, on an immediate uh, solution, obviously the word business development comes to mind, right? So depending on your position within your organization, um, you know, a hiring freeze is a great time to refocus your strategies and efforts to gaining new business, right? Or obviously spending time and in investing in your current staff and employees to perhaps pay for some trainings or bring in, you know, you, you think it's a hiring freeze. Well, a hiring freeze would perhaps be a good time to implement a new tool, right? A sourcing tool, Gem. I don't know if anyone's used Gem or Eightfold, right? So if you're in the tech uh, community, you should be using Eightfold or Gem. Gem is an email drip campaign and Eightfold is an AI powered search engine. But both of these tools find those hard to find candidates. They search the entirety of the internet, right? So, you know, my advice would be during a freeze or a hiring, you know, downsizing time with your organization, find out what you can do to make yourself visible, whether it's business development, whether it's conducting or participating in trainings, you know, just just don't let yourself stay idle and kind of fall off the radar, right? Because then all of a sudden you may find yourself out of work as well. So, um, you know, and, and, and don't be afraid to, uh, uh, during high, if you find yourself laid off, right, for a period of time, it may be a few months, right? So my word of advice would be to create and do some little small side jobs and projects. And, you know, this is a little bit off topic, but Uber Eats and, um, you know, just to keep yourself afloat, to keep yourself with income coming in during those hard times, during that freeze, and then also preparing yourself, you know, when I didn't have a job, I sent out 200 resumes a day, right? So, so wow. my strategy, so when I, so when I was unemployed for, and it was only about two weeks, I actually had gotten the job, but while I was worried about being unemployed, I sent out 200 resumes a day on every platform you could imagine. And then, you know, I maybe had 20 interviews, but out of all those interviews, in one month, you know, and maybe one or two made it to, so it's very frustrating. It's, um, you know, it, it's challenging. So my advice is to use the numbers game to your advantage, use the upskilling and uh, downtime to your advantage, uh, pivoting industries, creative thinking for looking for work, use that for your advantage. Um, you know, there's just a lot of, um, you know, uh, thought process that can go in while you're not working. Um, it's just such a scary time. It's sometimes hard to, uh, to, you know, cause I could have taken a job, you know, I was unemployed and I could have just taken any job, right? I, I could have waited Wait, and nice. just took another uh, agency job for 20, cause I got a kid to support. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and so it's so important that during that time that you look for the right job, right? So many times you're just scared and you have no money. And so you take the first thing that comes along. And then a year later, you find yourself in the same position because you hate your job or you don't want to go to work. And, um, you know, that's my best advice, uh, you know, if you are experiencing some downtime. Oh, <laughs> Can you hear me? I think you're yep. freezing up. Yep, I think there's a little bit of a lag there. Let me just check. I think. Unfortunately, this happened on our last webinar as well. I don't know if this is a thing just with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know it. Uh, some sometimes I do see uh, a, a little bit of lag, especially every time I. Uh, other stuff off here just in case it's coming from my end and close out some pages but uh but 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 yeah i i definitely would say to anybody on this call today that needs help um you know one last point on searching for a new job is uh utilize your network right so a little trick that i learned 
is last year I saw everybody posting, lost my job, lost my job, right? And then underneath that posting, there would be about 50 people that would post jobs that are hiring, right? So I would poach. So I would go to everyone else's posting and then post poach their comments, you know, so-and-so's hiring. And I would go to that page and that recruiter and write them. And, and, and I started finding leads that way, right? There's just so many ways to uh, be creative looking for a job, you know, on, on LinkedIn especially. And don't With LinkedIn and itself, uh, did, did you find, you know, more use having like a good established personal brand? There? Because you are also someone who posts a lot on LinkedIn and you have like a good number of followers there. And did that you know, play to your advantage as well? Because we keep talking about, you know, recruitment, marketing, and building your personal brand as well during, you know, this, especially for recruiters in order to attract better candidates and maybe even better jobs that way. But did it help you? Uh, Well, I mean, it's, you know, my network is what helped me, right? So out of those 10,000 jobs I applied to, I ended up getting a referral from a friend. Right. And, 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 and so, and, and, and even the current company that I'm in, you know, 90% or 80% of the new employees are referrals. Right. And, and, and so, you know, everyone's so concentrated, like you said, on the marketing and branding themselves and getting them, you know, when really you could just reach out to some people in your past and reach out to current connections on LinkedIn and um, you know, on LinkedIn, what I do is every couple of days I go through and I just try to connect as with as many people as the system will let me, right? So I'll just type in, uh, so right now I'm looking for a director of engineering. So I'll just type in director of engineering and then every single person on LinkedIn that has that title, I friend them. And, and, and so, you know, after a couple months of doing that, I've got hundreds and thousands, or, you know, of engineers and directors. They're all my friends. And then when I post the job next week, I need a director. Then all of a sudden, that uh, little bit of work I did to my profile uh, has now boosted that exposure for me hiring the right candidate. So it's just yes. a... Uh, yeah, I mean, that's my great best in, uh, LinkedIn. If you want to build your profile and presence, whatever industry you're in, whatever you're uh, trying to do, if you're trying to look for a job, just type in hiring manager and then friend all of those hiring managers. And then a week later, right, I'm looking for a job. And then all of those people that accepted your friendship, and now you've just gotten yourself a better opportunity, you know? Right, right. I mean, all of these really helpful tips and I'm going to keep them in mind too, just in case I need them at any time, especially all your tips about looking for new jobs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, 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 I would like to post more and help more because I went through it, you know, just a few months ago. And, um, you know, there's so many interesting little tips, you know, like poaching from other people's postings of, you know, looking for work and uh, going through your messages and just writing a simple, hey, what's up, man? Been a while. You know, I'm looking for work. Um, and, and even while I was interviewing, I passed along all the jobs I turned down. Right. So all right. my colleagues, all my colleagues at TikTok that got laid off. I got some of them jobs because I just shared with them the jobs that I didn't take and they did. So yeah, just, just keep at it. Reach out to me. Um, you know, if there's anybody that's on this call or watches this uh, recording, um, please ping me on LinkedIn, uh, shoot me a message and um, you know, I will help you any way that I can. And if you guys know of any good AI ML engineers or directors <laughs> around the world, your GSK is, um, you know, it's just, a, you know, when you think about working for Google or Apple or Meta, you, you, you have to bring in, lay, think about layoffs and downsizing and the economy right? It's so volatile. So whether you're a recruiter trying to find a job or you're a recruiter trying to recruit for a job, 
the commitment and uh, dedication to your industry and what you're doing is so important, right? So, I mean, it's a little bit rough, but now I, I put it to my, can- like, hey, you could go to Meta and, and you could work on an algorithm to sell somebody a pair of shoes. Wow. Great. Joe bought a hundred pair of Nikes. Mm-hmm. Or you could come to GSK and you could work on, you uh-huh. know, modeling a database to come up with a cure for cancer. You know, what, what, what do you want? And, and not only are you coming up with a cure for cancer, your job's secure for the next thousand years because everyone needs health care right. always. And, and so okay. then all of a sudden these directors and engine, oh, well, maybe I don't want to go work for Google or <laughs> when Meta. When you put it like that. <laughs> maybe I want my child to ha- not have respiratory disease, right? So, I mean, you know, here at GSK, that's what we do. We do, you know, treatment drugs and vaccines. So um, I, I just, um, I love my job. I love the future. I love the um, intrinsic nature of, um, you know, helping the world be a healthier place. Um, and uh, when you work for a larger organization, this is my first experience with mass amounts of systems, right? I've got service now, I've got workday, I've got Slack, I've got Teams, I've got email, I've got uh, web pages. So, um, you know, that's another thing I would say, if you have a special systems skill like workday or service now, um, you can market that skill and find a good job just on that alone because workday is a beast. <laughs> <laughs> On that subject of tools, though, uh, I had another question, you know, about what are the tools that you see for 2023 as something that recruiters need to have or need to focus on or things that, like you mentioned, right, the hacker jobs. That's also something important tools for them as well as tools they can use for their businesses. Sure. And, you know, I'm kind of... Kind of going through that right now in my demand plan and recruiting plan is I have to show, okay, what are we currently using for posting our jobs, right? LinkedIn, web page, Indeed, whatever, all right? And, and, and so those are all fine, but then, yeah, yeah uh, what happened is you may have five, six, seven resources for posting that you're not even using that you don't even know about, right? I have a diversity recruitment team that can post my job. I, I have other uh, avenues available to me through my um, FDS or RPO team, right? So if you're a recruiter working with another agency, you know, what tools does that agency have available that I can use, right? So my, right. my, first, an- my first answer would be to investigate what's available to you currently from end to end, right? Uh, uh, for two years, we were just posting on LinkedIn and the webpage. And, and then I got on board a few months ago and I found seven other places that we have of, that we weren't using, you know? And, and so my first uh, bit of advice would be to do a, an over, you know, look of what you currently have available as far as platforms, job boards, internal websites. And then those tools, right? You have two types of tools, either search tools or landing pages or job boards, right? Those kind of basically all you got. And, and there's different varieties, right? So my, uh, it, you know, I, I'm trying to push right now, for example, Gem, right? So Gem is something different. It's an email drip campaign, and it also pulls phone numbers and emails as an extension to your LinkedIn, and it scours the entire website for their, or entire internet for their information, right? And so every candidate that you find on LinkedIn, you actually get their email address from college, personal, and their phone number. So you can call them. But Jem sends out an email drip campaign. Hey, John, I got a cool job. You know, what do you want? He doesn't answer. A week later, another automated. Hey, John, I know you're busy. Yeah, sorry, I missed you again, man. And then a third week, another email goes out, a breakup email. All right, John, sorry, man, forget it. Maybe next year. And actually, 68% of them reply to the breakup email. (laughs) And, 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 And 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 so this is an automated process in the background, right? That's just going on. 
And then also I like to push this eightfold, right? So eightfold is an AI powered search, pl- uh, search tool. It's like an ATS system slash search tool, but it's powered by AI and it triangulates data points for your job. And it's, it's really cool. And, and what I've noticed is that it actually finds, you know, uh, thousands of candidates on LinkedIn that you weren't even, you would never find in your normal searches. So uh, Eightfold is actually a great tool to um, add on to what you currently have. Um, But it is a little bit, you know, it depends on what your budget is like. So Gem and Eightfold, as far as, you know, specific tools that you can bring on board to your organization. And then obviously ATS systems like Greenhouse. You know, I I think Greenhouse is probably the number one uh, system altogether that, combines all of those and then you guys i guess we could bring you into it at hacker earth right mm-hmm. so you know uh what do, what would hacker earth um step in to an agency or to uh, a place like gsk and benefit us how, how do you work so since we have you know assessment softwares and we have our remote interviewing tool as well as you know hackathons so it's always the screening process where we'd probably be the most helpful there because we have an entire library of different questions that address different functions right so there's a separate question library just for ai and ml engineers or full stack developers front end back end data scientists and i think there are over 15 to 18 job roles itself, but more than 16,000 questions and, you know, constantly updating library that keeps happening as well. So that's where we would come in at least. And yeah, that's, I mean, that, that's an area that we are also super excited about coming, for, you know, for the next year. I think given that upskilling is such a big part of 2023, we have hackathons and we have, you know, we conduct them to upskill people. We help tech leads and, you know, tech recruiters as well. And basically any sort of job function that, uh, you know, they can log in and create their own hackathons, create their own hiring challenges and stuff like that. But yeah, again, if anyone wants to know more about Hacker Earth, we, I'm just going to put our link out there and you can reach out to us there and we'll tell you all about us and what we've been doing and the interesting people that we've worked with as well so far. Uh, but yeah, as for, you know, whatever tools you've mentioned, Jason, I think I think ATS especially, I, I, I read somewhere, I'm not sure which one of the uh, important publications released it, but I think this year is the year of the ATS as well. Everyone's looking to get to upgrade themselves there and looking for new ATS platforms or even you know, maybe Greenhouse too. But yeah, yeah, Greenhouse, Bullhorn, um, you know, here we use Workday um, and Workday is great, but it's um, it's so massive and there's so many, yeah. the recruitment piece is like an, an entire separate piece of Workday that uh, companies can integrate into their other, you know, business processes in Workday. So that's another thing to, you know, ask about if your organization has Workday or is currently using Workday, um, ask about the recruitment piece or the ATS piece. Got it. And now I'm just going to, you know, open the floor up. We have just a few minutes left, but if anyone has any questions, I have someone who's pinged me here already. But if you have any other questions, feel free free to drop it in on the Q&A box on the Zoom, the panel right there. Uh, So I have a question that interestingly enough came in our previous webinar as well. What would your advice be to people starting out in tech recruitment for the first time? (laughs) Yes. um, You know, if it's your first uh, engagement with the recruitment space and tech recruitment space, um, you know, I, I would try to get in on the ground floor and, and really market your people skills, right? So a recruiter and a hiring manager, uh, a lot of the times they're open to training and upskilling, right? And so if it's your first, um, you know, adventure into tech recruiting, first, 
Well, first of all, learn a little bit about tech. So, I mean, before you do anything, you know, learn a little bit about the tech um, uh, verbiage, right? And learn a little bit about the company you're applying to. Um, but yeah, that that would that would be a a, a piece of advice. Um, I have another question here. What's your advice on? Uh, having a good line of communication with your hiring manager. I, I don't know if this is uh, relating to any particular situation, but I, I guess in general, what would be yeah. your advice yeah. for that? Well, considering I, considering I have uh, 17 hiring managers in the 14 project teams. Yeah. I know a little bit about this one. Um, so, uh, my advice here would be set expectations, right? So the issue I'm running into is the agency and the hiring manager both have different expectations and SLAs, right? Sourcing time, yeah. quality of candidates, time to fill, right? These are all metrics that the hiring manager is worried about. And, and so my best advice for a recruiter dealing with a hiring manager is is to at the very beginning of everything uh, we have what's called an rsm meeting recruitment strategy meeting that's required when every new rec is open and, and there's a framework that goes into that meeting okay so uh, my advice would be to set up a RSM meeting with that hiring manager. And during that meeting, obviously you go over all the basics, right? The job description, where he wants it posted, what type of candidate he's looking for, what skills he needs. But outside of those tech requirements, also go through the interview process. How, how quickly and um, how quickly would he would like to, uh, uh, you know, look at other options for recruiting if it's not going well, right? So all of those things that could happen, you know, him being unhappy, you've already um, discussed and have a plan for. It's not going well. What do we do? Uh, we're not uh, going fast enough in the pipeline for hiring. What do we do, right? And and, and so you can work from a back you know, a backwards angle, having all those expectations set in the beginning. And then as you work through filling the wreck, the problems come up and you can always revert back to those expectations. Right. right. And communication. Communication is key. Um, uh, in a digital world, right, everybody's hiding behind teams and emails, Right. So all my recruiters and hiring men, they just want to send an email. They just want to ping me on Slack or they ping me on Teams. And um, uh, it, it's hard to communicate. Right. So if you look at my calendar, it's booked up and they're all meetings with hiring managers and recruiters. And all I'm, I'm not special. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. I'm, I'm just a good communicator. Right. I, I can I can talk to the hiring manager. I can talk to the recruiter. I can find out what's wrong and then I can attempt to fix it. That's all. But if I didn't open up that communication, that chat channel, that Slack channel. Right. Now, everybody's doing their own thing. And it's called guesswork. I got to guess what the recruiter's doing. I got to guess if I'm going to get quality candidates. So uh, communication and expectation. Got it. Uh, so this is our last question because we're going to run out of time after this. Uh, this is a question related to what you mentioned earlier. What database did you use to get the names of people who were laid off from different co companies? Um, so... What I did from that perspective is I just got the company list of who was laying off and then I did the legwork on LinkedIn myself. So wow. I saw yeah, yeah, so I saw Twitter laid off 13,000. So all I did was go on to LinkedIn, search Twitter. Uh, I was looking for an AI engineer, right? I'd type in Twitter, AI engineer. You can find all the AI engineers that are on LinkedIn that worked for Twitter, right? Just go through them. Lost job, lost job. Lo okay, message, yeah. message. Because all of them posted or 90% of them posted, I was part of the layoff. I was part of the layoff. 
I, so that's all public postings. That's all public information. So you as the recruiter just have to first be aware of who's laying off. And then secondly, put in the effort to go find them on LinkedIn because they're all on there. Uh, oh, I think someone has pinged us in the chat as well. <coughs> a air table and there's a link about layoffs also. So I guess someone did find a database uh, as well. And there and okay, so it's called Airtable. Uh, it, there's a there's a website link here called layoffs.fyi. I'm I'm not going to open it right now, but That's all uh, good. yeah, <laughs> feel free to try that out to anyone here in the audience? Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, that's a huge part of the market, right? Especially if you're a tech recruiter. Uh, startups are going belly up all the time. Um, downsizing is happening all the time. Uh, you know, take, uh, it was, what's also good about being in the healthcare industry now, right? I can take any machine learning engineer and he doesn't have to have a healthcare background. So I just need a good machine learning engineer. He doesn't need to know biological sequence DNA patterning, you know. Uh, so, right. you know, really start to think, you know, transferable industries, transferable skills. And, and that layoff list really helps doing the legwork on LinkedIn, especially if you have a LinkedIn recruit seat, right? You can go ahead and send a bulk email out to a bunch of candidates. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, and that's time for us right now. So I'm just going to end the questions here. But if anyone has any other questions, you can reach out to me over email or even connect with LinkedIn, uh, connect with Jason over LinkedIn. And he is, uh, he's super quick to respond. He'll be more than happy to help you with anything that you have. Uh, so thank you again, Jason. Thank you for joining us. This was a super insightful session. I loved having you here again. And uh, I wish you all the success, you know, at GSK. I can already tell you love what you're doing. And yeah, I yeah. hope, you know, just see you grow bigger and better there. Uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the invite. Uh, thank you to everybody who attended today. I, I should have actually posted it on my feed as well, but I just got, but, uh, but yeah, I really recording ap- later anyway. Okay. I, I will. I'll, I'll report the, report the, uh, the recording later, but, um, yeah, thank you very much, Rebecca, for the invite. And, um, you know, as mentioned, if anybody needs help with anything, go ahead and ping me on LinkedIn. Yep. And thank you everyone for joining us. Have a great rest of the week. Please do fill in our survey form at the end of this webinar so that we can figure out what topics you'd like to see next and plan out our future webinars accordingly. Thank you everyone and uh, have a great rest of the day. Goodbye. Thanks, Jason. Bye. Bye.